So far we have only spoken about the way ideal gas molecules behave. We still haven't spoken about how actual or real gas molecules behave. Now recall that any ideal gas molecule will behave accordingly with the kinetic molecular theory, which makes a few important assumptions. Now in this lecture we're going to look at the way real gas molecules behave, and which assumptions are broken down and under which conditions. So on the conditions of standard temperature of 0 Celsius and standard pressure of 1 atm, we can use the ideal gas law to solve problems and to figure out how gas molecules behave. Now, on the conditions of high pressure of about 1000 atm and low temperatures, the ideal gas law breaks down, meaning our gas molecules no longer behave accordingly with this law and we can't use this law to solve any form of problem. Now let's see why this happens and let's see what breaks down. So suppose we have this system in which we have nine molecules and this system is under constant temperature but our pressure is 1 atm. Now suppose we go from this system to a much smaller system so we decrease volume and we increase pressure, but our temperature remains constant. So let's go back to this system. At this system, which was at standard temperature and pressure, these two values, our distance between any two molecules was much larger than the distance or the size of the actual molecule itself. So that means we can use the kinetic theory to approximate how this behaves, because if the distance is far, then we can assume the volume of the molecules to be very, very small. And since they're far away, we can assume they don't attract or re repel each other. However, when we get to this state, what happens here? At high temperatures, suppose this is 1000 atm and still 0 Celsius. So our volume has decreased tremendously and our pressure has increased, but temperature remained the same. So at very high pressures, the distance between any two molecules is approximately the same as the size of the molecule itself. Now, and I claim, under this condition, the kinetic theory breaks down. So let's see what about the kinetic theory that breaks down in this system. Well, now the molecules are very close to each other. They're so close, in fact, that they will attract each other and repel each other. So the forces that we spoke about before that we neglected, now we have to take them into consideration. And these forces follow Coulomb's law, meaning that if our distance decreases, our force increases. So if these guys are, if this one's positive and this one's negative, they will attract each other according to Coulomb's law. So now one of the assumptions of the kinetic theory breaks down, namely the electrostatic forces. Electrostatic forces cannot be neglected when pressures are very high. Now let's look at the volume. Let's take this picture and zoom in. This is what we get. Notice that the space in between the molecules is approximately the same or has the same volume as the molecules themselves. Now the volume can no longer be neglected. So we can't say the volume is zero because now the molecules actually take up a lot of space, much more than in this picture. And that means the second assumption in our, in our kinetic theory also breaks down, namely volume is no longer zero. So we see that at extreme conditions of high pressure, our ideal gas law no longer holds. Now let's see why under low temperatures, the ideal gas law also breaks down. Well, if we're at low temperatures, that means each molecule has a smaller kinetic energy and therefore is traveling with a smaller velocity. And therefore, they will all drop to the bottom of the container and they will collect and get very close. And if they're close, that means they're feeling electrostatic forces. And so our kinetic theory also breaks down under low temperatures. Now, let's compare the pressure of ideal and real systems. Now, for the pressure of an ideal system, remember, they're not feeling electrostatic forces. And that means they hit the wall of the container and they're not attracted or repelled by other molecules. 
For real situations, for real gases, the pressure is less. Well, why is it less? Well, when the molecule in the real gas travels, it's attracted by other molecules. And that means if it's attracted by other molecules, if it's pulled by the other molecules, it will hit the wall with less force, and therefore a smaller pressure will result. That means for ideal pressures, ideal pressures are higher than real pressures. Likewise, let's examine the conditions for volume of ideal versus volume of real. Now the volume of ideal is less than volume of real because when you're taking into consideration the volume of real gases, you're taking into consideration the volume of the molecules. And that means the volume will be plus the volume of the molecules and so the volume of real gases will be greater. So now let's see what the gas law is for real gases. So recall that the ideal gas law states that pressure of the ideal system times volume of ideal system gives you NRT. And now notice that in a real system and an ideal system, this NRT remains the same. This remains a constant. Because if we're talking about the same temperature, our T in both ideal and non-ideal conditions stays the same. Our R remains a constant and our number of moles does not change. So in both ideal and non-ideal systems, this guy remains constant. The only thing that changes is pressure and volume. And so suppose we have P ideal and V ideal. Now from this information, we know that our P real is smaller than our P ideal. And that means we have to add some term to our P real to equate that to our P. Likewise, our V real is larger than V ideal. And that's why we have to subtract some term from it, some term Y, to get the V ideal. And so from experiments, scientists found out what this X and what this Y was. This X is N squared times A over V2, this Y is N times B. Now N is simply number of moles and V is volume. A and B are constants that depend on the gas being used. And so they're different for different gases. Now once again, the reason we have this guy, the reason we're adding this guy to P real is because P real is smaller than P ideal. Likewise, the reason we're subtracting uh, this guy from uh, V real is because when we're talking about V real or volume of real systems, we're taking into consideration the volume of the actual molecules. And so V ideal is less because in V ideal, we're not taking the volume of the molecules into consideration. And this formula is known as Van der Waal equation.